The Gospel of Jesus Christ according to Luke chapter 17, 17 verses 11 through 17. Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Let us pray. Loving God, we are so thankful for this day, the day that we come to worship you and do all. Praise you for the band and also the pianists and our voice and our gathering for this morning. I ask the Spirit to be with us today. Help us to, to live in for your word of God and may your word be glorified today. Ask for a blessing by the hearing the word of God. Help them to be a faithful servant to your God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So before we start, we gonna, I want to acknowledge uh, my brother over there, this passage, John, and also his wife. They are from the uh, Korean church, our brothers and sisters from the Korean church. Uh, The readings for this morning spoke to itself. And for how many times did we listen to these readings and try to understand what is going on between Jesus and also his ministry? That's the way we are thinking how we present or present our life to God. At the same time that Jesus already presents himself to all of us through the cross is a huge preparation for a time that he present himself in a faithful way to all of us. And this morning we will hear there were 10 men, I don't know where they came from, maybe they came from Tom or whatever, but they are unknown men over there, where they are trying to present themselves to Jesus and see how Jesus reacts. And also one of them will say thank you to Jesus. And today, we see how we be thankful when we present our life to God. At the beginning of the reading for this morning, there's something that's very important for us to be understand what is going on. There's Luke, also mentioned over here, he went to Jerusalem. You know there's mostly Jesus ministry in Galilee. That's where the poor people live. That's where the people that nobody known. Who are they? There's no names over there. Unknown people were there. But Jesus trying to present himself and give them hope for the people, they are no hope at all. Or maybe healing those they are sick. And this morning we had many people who were sick and we are so thankful that God be with them at a time there's no hope for them to give them hope. And now there's a time where Jesus, after three years, nearly three years of his ministry in Galilee, he's heading towards Jerusalem. And we know that when he's going to Jerusalem, there will be something happen over there. That's his final journey to Jerusalem. But Luke just mentioned it this time. So the readings will explain to us what is going on and why he's going to Jerusalem this time. And he passed through the midst of Samaria and also Galilee. And he 
pass through in the midst of Samaria and also Galilee. You know, when you live in Jerusalem or in Judah, if you want to go to Galilee, you are not going through Samaria. You have to take a long route as long as you are not going through these filthy, unclean people. And now if Jesus on the other side wants to go to Jerusalem, instead of going around for his forefathers dead, he finds a way to go through there because his path is so passionate to be reaching the people. There are no hope and keep them hope. He know the story. When Israel split, it's north and south. South in Judea, where Judah, and the north, where Israel over there, and their capital is Samaria. And so many times they went on a prison to the other nation, they are in the marriage. And because they didn't have a full blood, they are unclean. And there's no way for them who live in Judah or Jerusalem to go through Samaria. Take a long way. And now Jesus standing on the other side and looking for those that didn't have hope and give them hope by doing that. He must go through that. Well, it's a big story every time in the news. The borders, the borders. This illegal immigrant came over here. And somehow they always mention over there, our president is not going over there to the borders. I'm not saying that Jesus illegally to them. There was a road over there supposed to use it, but because they came, there's a hatred inside themselves. They don't want to cross there. And they label their name, they're unclean because they are hate. They hate them. And Jesus looked at them. While I'm here, I want to break down the period of hatred. But the fathers were there. And if you look at it, he entered a certain village. A certain village with a name. If you go that road all the time, you remember every road and every McDonald's over there before you arrive in Jerusalem or from Jerusalem to Galilee. You know exactly the best place to eat over there in the evening. They didn't know that. There's no name at all. It's so sad. If you won't have a name, how can you live without, no, without a name? How can you present yourself or your life in no name? And here in this village, did he enter, Jesus entered a certain village. Wow. Oh. And here's the next, here's the next. Then met him ten men who were lepers. Oh, wow. That's why. They put a, everything labeled this area and now they bring the levers over there to stop them from closing. They keep on burying with the hatred, with excuses and everything in this road to stop everyone from reaching to the other side. And they put all the levers over there. When they put the levers over there, you are not allowed to go over there. He will be far. He will stood up far. And sometimes our lives we feel so heavy, so burdened, and we don't have anything. But he will stood from the far and looking for the best of your life, but because it's too heavy on your shoulder and he can't take it with you, how can he release it? There's no way for you to do it by yourself. It's so hard now for families to find a job. It's so hard now for family because it's too expensive everything in America. And now there's good over there from the farm. If they have money, 
they can walk? What about those that come to the hospital because they have cancer and they told them, yes, we have something for you, but the price is too high. There's more burden of you to stop you from crossing or crossing the road to give you hope. You have no hope at all. And here he comes, there's Jesus. Made 10 lepers over there. They were there for a long time. Because no one knew the village. They didn't know their names. All they know, they are lepers. It may be from the smell of these people. Maybe they heard a story about that. I doubt they heard a story about that. But this area where they are, it is forbidden for them to go there because of hatred. And then hatred built up on top of everything and everything and everything. I'm sure you all know what leprosy is. It is a dreadful disease. Most people think that leprosy causes your skin to rot and fall off your body. But this is not really the case. The only thing that leprosy does is to destroy the body's nerves system. It is simply causes you not to be able to feel anything. So when sin walked into our life, we didn't have any feeling at all. We have no feeling to connect Christ. We have no feeling for the hope that God gave for us. We are standing afar and watching for all the great things happen in all of us. But it's so hard for us to move forward until that we have the right person, that Jesus Christ, come into our lives. And when Jesus with them, and they lift up their voice. They lift up their voice and say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. This is the level of their worship. The lowest, and they don't want anybody to hear that. I believe all the agony and every problem they have, they lower, lower themselves. Hardly to lift up their face, and they can't wait for a moment to lift their voice. When we come on Sunday, we want to lift up their voice. The Psalms say, lift up your voices, all saints. Make a joyful noise. Hardly for church now to make a joyful noise. But in here, there's people are dying. They need to raise their voice so Jesus can hear them. Jesus. Yeah, I know it, Jesus. But when they say master, it means everything on this earth, under on his hand, his control. Even what they have inside themselves. This is a Jesus, the master who control everything and we believe if we lift up our voice to him, he will heal us. And that's what they did. Have mercy on us. Heal us, oh God. I'm a sinner, please heal me. I'm a lepers and everything on my skin, I look at them. They cost me not to be with my family, not to be with the people that I love, not to be worshiped with the people that I want to worship. Because of this happened to me. But now have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. And I love it when Luke, Luke is very smart, but also he's saying, so when he saw them, he said to them, go, go show yourself to the priest. That's all he wanted. You go to the ten of them. But one person inside himself, I'm not going. There's something that I miss in my life. 
I want to present my life to Jesus. I had to go back and fell down my knee on him and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And you know, that's the only name they mention where he came from. It's a Samaritan. He came from Samaria. For all the people worshiping in Jerusalem and going around, they never return back to Jesus and say, thank you. And to make a way for the hatred, and that hatred, the midst of the hatred, there was a new form of love and mercy and grace of God arise from over there. It says Samaritan, it's a mixed breed. I know you know that. But so many things mix in our lives. We didn't have our full identity. And the only thing that we do to raise our voice and be merciful to us, oh God. And God, that's what I love. Where's the other nine? Where's the other nine? And one of them he saw, and he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorify God. He returned for what God did for his life. He fell down on his face, on his on his face and his feet, giving him thanks. And that was a Samaritan. Faithful people, Tracy, what about you? Are you from the Father? I am. Are, are you having so many burdens in your life now? You can't have anybody to release to him. You won't have anybody in your life to walk with you when you are alone. Can you think inside yourself? What kind of a burden do you have? Are you willing to share with others? I'll give you one person that he will be with you. That Jesus. And that Jesus will heal you and walk with you. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. Loving God, we are so thankful for this morning. This is our story. And thank you for your love and your grace. You heal us. You forgave us. You forgive us. You die on the cross for our sins. May your blessing upon all of us who are here this morning and continuously live in our hearts that one day that we face to face with you and you say, come, your faith heal you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.